Sigma is one of the most versatile tanks in Overwatch 2. From having strong defensive abilities to having insane damage combos, the only thing this guy is missing is any form of mobility. But he floats, so it's okay. A scientific miracle! Sigma's primary fire consists of two projectiles that deal 55 damage each. The regenerative nature of his fire rate allows you to mix in a melee attack between these sets of shots as well. Overall, with two direct hits and a melee in between, Sigma can deal up to 140 burst damage every 1.5 seconds. Since his primary fire shoots projectiles, you really want to be aiming these in slight anticipation of your target's movement, especially at range. Aiming them directly at the target will generally cause you to miss the direct damage impact, but is more consistent if you're at close range. There are a couple of cool quirks in how his primary fire works as well. For example, if enemies have a slight distance buffer from you, you can bounce these projectiles against the floor to cause the explosion damage to occur closer to Sigma. Or, as another example, if enemies are around a corner, you can once again bounce the projectiles into their path for some neat picks. With all of that being said, you really want to be focusing on squishy heroes as Sigma. Shooting at tanks on occasion is fine, but Sigma gains real value from shooting behind the tank and putting the lower health heroes at risk. Before we move on to talk about any of Sigma's cooldowns, let's talk about his general playstyle. Sigma is classically a poke tank, but with the move to Overwatch 2, he gained a ton of brawl potential. Whilst he doesn't excel at these close ranges against classic brawl tanks, he can definitely hold his own against squishier heroes. This sets Sigma up perfectly to set up on high ground to initiate poke damage and drop onto the enemy team when the time is right. Holding the high ground gives you and your team an inherent advantage on the fight, both giving you an advantageous angle to fight from, but also giving you the ability to decide when to fully engage. Utilize Sigma's range and kit to soften the enemy up, and once you find a pick onto their tank or a few squishies, cash in your high ground advantage and take the fight to them. Sigma's real value is truly escalated when the enemy tank is out of the fight. Moving on to his rock, you can combine this ability with a double primary fire hit onto the stun target to deal exactly 200 damage. This combo will kill exactly 50% of the current hero pool, eliminating any hero with 200 or less HP. The only hero of 200 health that survives this combo is Brick, since her 50 armor brings her effective health ball to 215. This combo is one of the main factors of Sigma's current strength in the meta. Where having either a one-shot or some effective close-range damage is necessary, being able to dish out quick eliminations at close range provides Sigma with a ton of strength in the current meta. Let's move on to potentially the longest part of this video, his shield, and some cool things that you can do with this. To start off, you want to understand his shield as a space-taking tool. Extending it in front of you, blocking damage from opponents, and claiming the space between you is its primary purpose. As Overwatch is a game focused around this space and map control, having a 700 HP shield that you can deploy far ahead of you is a great tool for taking space and claiming map control. Once you're in the position you wish to fight from, there are a few cool things you can look to use his shield for. You should really try to view Sigma's shield as a line of sight blocker. If you didn't know already, most abilities within Overwatch use a line of of sight rule to apply their effects. For example, Ramatra's new ability, Ravenous Vortex, emits a line of sight from the center of the circle. Even though visually it may appear that the area of effect is the entire circle, you actually have to have a direct line of sight from the center for it to have any effect on you whatsoever. There are three main reasons you should be looking to break line of sight with Sigma Shield. The first and most important of these three is the block cooldowns. Whether this is a Roadhog Hook or a Wrecking Ball Pile Drive, Sigma Shield's primary uses should be to prevent high value enemy cooldowns. When you think about Overwatch as a game of resources, using a 2 second shield cooldown to block something like a 14 second Ana Sleep Dart provides you and your team a ton of value. Extending this outwards though, this 2 second shield ability also blocks a ton of ultimates. The primary example for this would be Reinhardt's Earthshatter. But Sigma can also provide protection from Diva's Self-Destruct, Doomfist Meteor Strike, and Ramatra's Annihilation. And that's without even mentioning any DPS or support ults. Just remember, for any of these ultimates that touch the ground, you'll need to place the shield connected to the floor to block line of sight. In general, when using Sigma's shield, you should always be looking for the value blocks that you can receive, as this will benefit your team a lot more than just shoving it into a choke point and letting it break. The secondary uses for Sigma's shield will be to block off enemy healing. Much like a Winston bubble, you can place Sigma shield behind the enemy you're fighting to break the line of sight for any follow-up support heroes. Oftentimes, finishing off a target can be tricky enough, so making sure they aren't actively regenerating health provides huge value to these interactions and can even force the enemy support into making mistakes. The final line of sight you should be looking to block is high impact damage. The most common example of this will be Widowmaker. As Widow players look to maintain a relatively consistent position, placing a shield to block off her impact is super annoying for any Widow player. 
When blocking off damage, however, you do not want to block off any damage that can easily tear through your shield HP. Whilst it might be a good blocking theory because you're blocking off a lot of damage, blocking any hero that can easily tear through your shield is actually a pretty bad trade as it denies you using your shield anywhere else. This is what makes Widowmaker such a good hero to block off, since her damage is focused into single burst rather than a high damage per second to break shield. On the topic of breaking shields, the final tip for Sigma shield ability is to not let anyone break it. This is more of a mid-max thing, but when Sigma's shield breaks, it gets put on a 5 second cooldown to replenish a baseline 300 HP. This 300 HP number is derived from his shield's 100 health per second regeneration, plus the baseline 2 second cooldown of you deploying his shield. If you're able to never let his shield fully break, the uptime of having your shield available to block cooldowns increases significantly. So instead of letting it break and forcibly recharge, it is important that you manage when your shield recharges so you can have it available for crucial blocking. This requires some strict shield management, balancing between blocking important cooldowns and damage, whilst knowing when is a good time to hold your shield back and let it regenerate health. The next piece of the Sigma puzzle is his Kinetic Grasp. This ability is likely the easiest to understand, but the one I probably see misused the most. The majority of the time, you want to be saving this ability for when you're in a sticky situation. In Overwatch, it's okay to overextend sometimes. You'll see the best tank players in the world being aggressive and taking risks multiple times in a game. However, the best players in the world will have a contingency plan for when things go wrong. High level players are able to rely on their supports to bail them out a lot more often than the average player, and that's where Sigma's Kinetic Grasp comes into play. If you're too far from your team getting peppered with damage and need a way out, that's where the Grasp comes in. Not only will it block any incoming front-facing damage for 2 seconds, it will convert 60% of that damage taken into overhealth. You can use this ability to change your momentum and regain an advantage within a fight, or to give you a small buffer to disengage with. For example, if you're mid-fight with 325 HP, conveniently the damage dealt by hands of storm arrows, and you block these arrows with kinetic grasp to suck up that 325 incoming damage, not only did you use the ability to avoid death, you were also able to increase your current health pool to 520. Now, depending on the situation of the fight, you can re-engage with your beefed up health pool, or use the extra overhealth to retreat safely. The final part of Sigma's entire kit is his ultimate ability. Gravitic Flux is currently one of the best ultimates in the game. For newer players, it might not seem that great, but let's talk about its power. Everybody caught in Sigma's ultimate takes damage equivalent to 50% of their max HP, plus a guaranteed 50 damage from the initial lift up. This alone doesn't kill anybody, but its real power comes from two outputs. The first is your teammates following up. 50% of heroes in Overwatch will be left with just 50 HP after getting caught in flux. 50 HP is around the justifiable range of calling out he's one in Overwatch, so almost any follow-up onto any hero caught in flux will confirm a kill. However, the primary source of kill potential from Sigma's ultimate is the big flying Dutchman himself. Whilst people are caught in Sigma's ultimate, not only are they suspended in the air for all to see, they are also frozen in place. This very easily enables Sigma to rise up and deal consistent damage to his targets, and this is where Flux's insane power comes into play. Of course, the damage number of this ultimate varies per hero, but any hero with 200 HP or less will die from Sigma's lift up damage, one orb in the air, plus the slam damage. Except for Brick whose armor pool requires you to hit both orbs whilst in the air. Cassidy, Sim, May, and Reaper all follow this two orb rule as well. Whilst it's impossible to hit more than two orbs during flux, technically Bastion and Junker Queen can be killed with three orbs, and Doomfist, Ramacha, and Zarya can all be taken out with four orbs. If we only include the heroes that can die during the length of flux, a staggering 67% of the current hero pool are killable within Sigma's ultimate. So the next time there's a random sojourn ruining your rank game, feel free to solo ult the life out of her and finish off with a single orb combo. And finally, let's talk a little bit about tank matchups. As Overwatch 2 has moved to a single tank lineup, paired with that annoying 30% ultimate charge retention, the tank role has essentially been watered down to a rock, paper, scissors matchup. However, Sigma is actually a tank without a lot of consistent weaknesses in this rock, paper, scissors meta. Naturally, Sigma isn't very good against most tanks in a 1v1 duel. However, his pokey playstyle means that you can still excel in some tank matchups. If you're able to keep your enemy out of range, then Sigma can be super effective when played against some of the Brawl tanks. These being Junker Queen, Orisa, and Reinhardt. He also has a pretty good time when facing Roadhog, since blocking Hooks with Shield and Rocking Hog out of Breaver are both positive interactions for Sigma. The final decent matchup for Sigma can be an inexperienced Wrecking Ball player, as you're able to block his pile drive damage and also disrupt a lot of ball setups with Rock. 
Sigma really struggles against a lot of the dive tanks. Since Sigma's best value comes from keeping a lot of the tanks at range, a Winston diving onto a Sigma doesn't really allow him to utilize this value. This also holds true for D.Va, whose matrix completely nullifies Sigma's primary fire. But in general, Sigma's matchups aren't crazy positive or negative like a lot of other tanks, making him a versatile pick into most comps if you're an amazing Sigma player. Just make sure you watch out for those pesky Sombras. If you enjoyed today's video or learned absolutely anything at all, please do drop a subscription to the channel, and I'll see you in the monastery.